The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. The fields of a circular cylindrical solenoid can be found using the Biot-Savart law. If these plane parallel plates were of infinite extent, an applied voltage would give an electric field that is uniform. What this plane parallel capacitor is to electric fields, an infinitely long solenoid is to magnetic fields. That is, if this solenoid were infinitely long, a current in the winding would produce a magnetic field intensity that is essentially uniform inside and equal to the surface current density. Outside, the field would be essentially zero. This solenoid is large enough that we can poke around in it with a magnetometer probe and see how the magnetic field is actually distributed when the length is finite. The solenoidal coil consists of n turns, essentially uniformly wound over the length d, each turn carrying the same current i. The radius is a. The current i is essentially phi directed. This axial hall probe shows us the magnitude and direction of the field. The probe measures the field along its axis. The lower scope trace records the probe output. The upper scope trace shows the coil current. When the probe is oriented this way, the axial component of magnetic field is measured. When the probe is oriented this way, the radial component of magnetic field is measured. Let's measure the axial magnetic field component along the axis of the cylinder. On the axis, the radial component is, of course, zero because of symmetry. Well inside the solenoid, the field intensity in the z direction tends to be uniform everywhere. The infinitely long solenoid can be regarded as the analog for MQS systems of the EQS plane parallel plate capacitor. Well away from the ends, the axial field, just inside the coil, should be equal to the surface current density. The surface current density is the number of turns times the current per turn divided by the length d. The probe measures the flux density mu naught h. To convert from SI units Tesla to Gauss, we multiply by 10,000. There are 141 turns. Our current is 1 amp RMS, and the coil length is 70 and a half centimeters. The predicted flux density just inside the coil is 2 and a half Gauss RMS. This is on the order of the steady flux density produced by currents inside the Earth. So that we can distinguish our fields, we are using a 60 hertz current. Let's measure the magnetic field well inside the solenoid. We measure about 2.3 Gauss just inside the winding, as compared to the prediction of 2.5 Gauss. Let's see what the tangential flux density is just outside at the same axial location. Just outside, the flux density falls by more than a factor of 10 to 0.15 Gauss. Just as the capacitor can be constructed to create a uniform electric field between the plates with zero field outside the region bounded by the plates, so too the long solenoid gives rise to a uniform magnetic field throughout the interior region. Our solenoid length is finite, so the field inside is only approximately uniform. and the exterior field is only approximately zero.
The magnetic field along the z-axis can be found by simple integration of the Biot-Savart law. The essentially phi-directed current along the entire winding generates a z-directed magnetic field along the axis of the cylinder. This is the on-axis distribution of the axial field intensity for our solenoid, which has a length to diameter ratio of 2.58. We can compare the prediction of this formula to our experiment here at the end of the solenoid. Biot-Savart predicts a flux density of about half of the two and a half gauss in the interior. Here's the on-axis magnetic field well inside the solenoid, about 2.3 gauss. Here at the end of the coil, we measure about 1.2 gauss, about half of the interior field. This is where our data points fall on the theoretical curve. Here's the interior point. Here's the point at the end of the coil. The accuracy with which theory and experiment agree is likely to be limited only by such matters as the uniformity of the winding, the care taken in mounting the probe, and the calibration of the Gauss meter. Another way to demonstrate the discontinuity in magnetic field between inside and outside the solenoid is to use this transverse probe. This probe measures magnetic fields transverse to its flat surface. Here, for example, is the on-axis field. Turning the probe by 90 degrees gives a zero signal, which shows the field is purely axial. We now place this probe just outside the solenoid in the orientation to measure the small tangential field component. As the probe passes through the current carrying winding, the magnetic field abruptly rises to the interior field value.